we're gonna calibrate the Sony ZA1100ES. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in this disc, this uh, Omni disc from Dayton Audio for the measurement mic. Got us all set up here to do some sweeps. Let's reset our max hold. Let's see what just the subwoofer does. You can hear that picture in the background. All right, so that's our low frequency. sweep and we're gonna go all channels okay all right let's try a long sweep let's try the left front front looks like. I want to see how the center channel does. Follows along quite nicely. Let's try the rears. Really similar. And left back. So those speakers are definitely well matched. Um, wow, it's probably closer than I thought. Energies, they, people have described them as being warm. I think that's probably why from about a thousand hertz down, um, they kind of have a bit of a, a gradual rise in the mid bass and bass region. So I'll take you through the full setup here, the auto calibration. All right, so this is a Sony ZA1100ES, but most AVR receivers will have some type of a calibration system. I think that Sony has their own, but you know, it looks, looks pretty decent to me. Let's just see what it comes up with when we go to the auto calibration. All right, so auto calibration. Connect the calibration mic to the calibration jack on the front of the receiver, then place the calibration microphone at your seated position. The calibration microphone is hooked up with a cord. I'm pointing, boom, down there at the receiver. It plugs in right about there. It's got a tiny little thin cord. You can see it stretched across here. And then that is sitting right there. So I've got my little Sony mic, left and right, and then I've got the Omni mic measuring it. So that's that. 
Go next. All right, so this allows us to select which speakers we're gonna have doing what. So this is the surround back terminals. Right there, it says surround back height. And the other one on, to, on the left of it is for surround. So if you had 7.1, you would be using the surround right and left speakers. And then you would have the surround back assigned to the very rear speakers, okay? Um, right now, I've got this, you know, nothing is on that surround for the rear speakers. All right, so listener level speakers and height overset. All right, so basically what this is doing, you can show it, you can see how it's kind of changing where the speakers are. So if I had the speakers directly above the TV, um, which they might even sound better up there, um, but I didn't feel like drilling holes in the wall. Okay, so that would be if they were in the ceiling and there's like mine sitting on top. So height overhead speakers and the FD, I don't know, I forget what that stands for. But uh, basically we've got height speakers so we can have either just 5.1 or we can add those. Okay, I'm gonna just leave them there because that's where they're at. Ceiling height is nine feet, that much I already know. All right, here it is. Here's the results of what it came up with. You got 0 dB, 13 feet, 11 inches. That's got to be for the center channel. Then we've got a bump of 4 dB and a measurement of 15.3 inches for this right Atmo speaker. Uh, 0 dB for the right front, which is 14 foot, 6 inches from the mic. Left speaker is at 14 feet, four inches. And that one is set to zero dB. Uh, this is for the subwoofer. So that's set at zero dB, 12 foot, nine inches. Left rear at zero dB, five foot, five inches. And the right rear is zero dB, seven foot, eight inches away. So basically the place where we have the biggest increase in decibel level, like level wise, is just on these Atmo speakers. Um, the rest of them are so well matched that basically it's just zero, 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 zero on the middle ones. I would say that's pretty good. I'm going to save that. Now it's going to ask me whether I want it at uh, full flat on that frequency graph. I'm not so sure I like that. Engineer is the Sony engineered thing, which kind of gives a little bit of a smiley to it. It's got a little bit of a drop in the mid-range. Um, and then we've got front reference, which is supposed to make, like if you had a bunch of different speakers combined, um, you would want to use front reference because you got one set of speakers that you're basing everything off of. But in this case, since all the speakers are well matched, um, I don't need to get into the front reference. So I'm just going to go Make this, uh, turn this into off. Okay. Do you want to activate the calibration matching function? It adjusts wave front output from paired stereo speakers. You can enjoy a wider a sweet spot and more natural sound effect. If you only want to use the calibration result as is select no. I'll be honest with you, this has always confused me a little bit. On the older receivers, like I have an old NAD surround sound receiver, and that has an option for the center um, as far as how wide it sounds. 
I, I think that that's what this is for. Um, I think I was always running at yes. Now let's just see what happens when I go to no. All right, the auto calibration is complete. The phase, distance, level, and positioning of the speakers have been calibrated. Please disconnect the microphone and store. All right, so that's basically a wrap for that. We've got auto phase matching is at auto. Calibration type is off. We got the 5.1.2. Um, now on size, I wanna show you this. On Sony receivers especially, it's gonna do this, but uh, basically, when you have a speaker that's, say, uh, capable of going down to 50 hertz or lower, chances are it's gonna show up as a large speaker. My front, it shows up as a large. The center shows up as a large. The surrounds show up as large. And then <laughs> even those little bitty things uh, show up as large. Now the heights, I don't want a lot of bass going to those height channels. so. I don't want to blow those out. So first thing I'm going to do is go down to that and I'm going to pick small for that. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to have um, some low frequencies um, that are fed to the subwoofer if they're going over the height channels. The rest of them, honestly, I think I'm going to leave them the way they were just to see what they sound like. Well, let's just try to go large on that. Because what that's going to do, I'll show you. For the crossover frequency, there's nothing, okay? It's just, so now that subwoofer is just going to play low frequency and that's it. Now, if I swapped out these little speakers for more of a full range speaker, um, I probably wouldn't have to worry about, you know, not gonna, you know blowing them out with too much bass. Um, but we could try it and see what happens. Center speaker lift up. When you have these speakers mounted up higher, it will make, an, make the illusion that the center channel is actually higher than it is. You can even relocate the speakers if you need to, like put them in a different place. I'm gonna show you that, it's pretty cool. So like, for example, places the four surround speakers at virtually identical angles according to recommendations, okay. So what it does is it kind of creates a phantom uh, image. Yeah, it generates phantom surround back speakers. And let's type A. Places surround back speakers on the back wall in addition to the 5.1 speaker placement. So basically what it's doing is taking your left and right rear speakers and it's making them sound like they're coming from further behind you. And it's giving the illusion of something behind it. For this purpose, because I'm measuring, I just, I'm going to leave that off. That's basically about it. Now let's go ahead and run our test and see what happens. Now that I've recalibrated it, do a little comparison. That's in uh, Pure Direct. That's after a calibration. It's been an incredible day here at Willow Springs, and we've seen some exciting driving. With just one lap remaining in this 40 lap race, we are coming to the final stretch. Dan Gurney has been leading the pack for both of them.
15.4 section 2b of the SCCA standard dictates all AF class cars must have minimum trunk space of 20 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches. Your trunk doesn't close. Ergo car fails standard. Wait, wait, wait. What? Ergo car is disqualified from said uh, class. Can I ask you a question? When you were in this book, did you think, when I like her, I want to go to the fabled Willow Springs Raceway and I want to enforce paragraph 15.4 section 2b of the SEC regulations on luggage capacity. All right, that, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm ruling you and your team disqualified from the race.